Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 31, words that have an I that sounds like Y. Words that make a Y sound. All right, please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your purple book open to page 191. You'll also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. If at any point I'm moving too fast, please pause the video and catch up. All right, so last week all of our words used the letter I at the end of an open syllable to create a long E sound. This week we're using that same letter I to make a Y Y sound. Notice that that Y sound is always part of a larger syllable, okay? Unlike the I um, in last week's list that could stand alone, this I is never gonna stand by itself because it's making a Y sound. And we know that every syllable has to have a vowel making a vowel sound. All right, so anyway, let's start by reading our list. Please repeat after me, and as you do, listen for that y sound in each word. Australia, battalion, behavior, billion, brilliant, convenient, familiar, genius, junior, lenient, medallion, million, pavilion, peculiar, rebellion, rebellious, resilient, senior, stallion, valiant. All right, choose a color and we're gonna go through and we're gonna circle the I in each word and we're gonna put a Y above it to remind ourselves that it's making a Y sound. Australia, battalion, behave your, billion, brilliant, convene, convenient, familiar, genius, Junior, lenient, medallion, million, pavilion, peculiar, rebellion, rebellious, resilient, senior, stallion, valiant. Okay, so notice what I was just saying a few minutes ago. All of these I's are tucked into a syllable with at least one other vowel. And that's because in our language, we know that every syllable has to contain a vowel and that vowel has to make a vowel sound. These I's are not making a vowel sound, they're making a Y, y sound. Okay, so over here, red circle equals I, but that I is making a Y sound. Okay, so that's where you're really, want, you're really gonna wanna focus your energy this week. But I wanna take a few minutes now to go back and review some of those suffixes that we have been practicing all year. So let's start with the O-R suffix. We see it at the end of junior, at the end of senior, and at the end of behavior. Now think back to week 12. We learned that that OR suffix always shows up at the end of a noun. Often it represents a person, right? A director is a person who directs. A narrator is a person who narrates. But it can also just show up at the end of a regular old noun like equator. So 
here, behavior is a noun, and that just means the way a person acts. The way a person acts. So if you are on your best behavior, you are acting as good as you can. A junior, that's a noun. Um, that's what we use to describe an 11th grade student. Okay, if you are in 11th grade, you are in your junior year. If you are in college and you're going to a four year school, that third year is also considered your junior year. Now in that case, when we're using it to describe something else like a junior year, we can use it as an adjective. Senior is another noun. A senior is a 12th grader someone in their last year of high school ready to graduate. A senior can also be a fourth year college student, somebody who's in their last year of college ready to graduate. But we can also use senior to describe an older person, a senior citizen, right? Um, so when we're talking about a senior citizen or we're talking about senior housing or a senior, a senior center, a place for older people um, to entertain themselves, we're using that as an adjective. Okay, so over here, pink box equals OR and that usually signifies a noun and often signifies a type of person. Okay, here's another suffix that I bet you recognize. This A-N-T suffix at the end of brilliant. And here it is again at the end of valiant. Now back on week 18, we learned that this A-N-T suffix usually shows up at the end of an adjective and it can often be changed to a noun by switching the ANT to ANCE. So distant can become distance, fragrant can become fragrance. Here we have brilliant. There's our describing word. If a person is brilliant, it means they're very smart. And if we're talking about the sun and it's really, really bright, um, we could talk about its brilliant light. So very smart or very bright. We can change that to a noun by changing it to brilliance. She is such a brilliant kid. I am always amazed by her brilliance. Over here we have valiant. That's also an adjective. And that means brave. So we use that word to describe soldiers, um, just uh, doctors, uh, you know, anyone that's doing something um, dangerous or risky to help others, we say that they are valiant. Um, okay, let's put that aside and choose another color. Um, another suffix that's very similar to ANT is ENT. We talked about this on week 19. We used words like silent and violent. Those are adjectives. Convenient is also an adjective. If something's convenient, it's easy to use. It's easy to get. Um, Right? So if I need to buy milk, you know, let's say I'm trying to get milk at 11 o'clock at night, I can go to the convenience store, right? That's quick and easy. It's right down the road. Um, but there are other things. Let's say I need a prescription filled at 11 o'clock at night. If the pharmacy's closed, it's not going to be convenient for me to get that prescription. So here's convenient. Um, we also see the same suffix with lenient. If somebody is lenient, they're not strict. So parents who 
Uh, lenient parents might let their kids stay out later. They might let them spend their money on whatever they want. Um, they let them hang out with whoever they want. They are lenient, okay? Um, if we talk about the courtroom, right? Let's say someone gets in trouble with the law. The judge might decide to be lenient and say, okay, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to let you off this time, right? So lenient is a describing word. Resilient is another describing word. If a person is resilient, they bounce back easily, okay? So there are some people, um, you know, something bad happens in their life and they don't leave their house for a year. Those people are not resilient, right? There are other people, something bad happens, they, you know, they, they grieve it, they work through it, and then they go back to being their old happy selves. They are resilient. So a resilient person knows how to bounce back and move forward. Now, back on week 19, we learned that any of these, or many of these ENT words, can be changed to a noun by changing them to E-N-C-E. We can change different to difference. We can change silent to silence. Convenient can become convenience. Lenient actually becomes lenient C, so it's C-Y. And then resilient becomes resilience. Okay, so anything in a brown box ends with E-N-C-E. And that represents, I'm sorry, E-N-T. And that represents an adjective. And then, I forgot to do this one. Anything that ends with A-N-T is also an adjective. Okay, do you see any other familiar suffixes this week? How about this one, the O-U-S in rebellious? We worked on O-U-S uh, back on week 29, a couple weeks ago, we, used, we had words like poisonous and famous. We know that O-U-S words are adjectives, they're describing words. If a person is rebellious, they fight back. Um, usually against authority. So a rebellious kid uh, might sneak out of the house. Their parents say you have to be home by nine, but then a rebellious kid might sneak out and come home at 10 or midnight. Um, so kids can be rebellious. Um, citizens can be rebellious. If they don't like what their government is doing, they might uh, stage a rebellion. They might rebel against their government. So a rebellious person fights back against the people in charge. So green box equals O-U-S. And we know that that is also an adjective. Okay, let's look at the rest of our words. These do not end um, with suffixes that we've discussed before, but that's okay. So we have Australia, that's a noun. It's actually a proper noun because it's the name of a specific place, which is why we always use an uppercase A. Australia is a continent. It's also a country um, in the Pacific Ocean. Australia, there's that suffix that um, makes that Y sound. Now, last week we saw words like media, and trivia and that i a made it it was actually two syllables right triv e a uh, mead e a uh. in this word australia it's one syllable yeah the i and the a go together uh we don't see that very often we see it in words like uh pneumonia petunia dahlia names of different flowers uh, so just keep that in mind um, a battalion, that's a noun. A battalion is a group of soldiers. 
for fighters, right? They're part of a battalion. Billion could be a noun if we're talking about here's a billion. Um, or it could be an adjective if we're using it to describe something like I have a billion dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. bigger than a million, less than a trillion. We have tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. Familiar. Um, did we talk about this one? Oh, we did. I, for, I forgot to mark it here. Earlier this year, week 12, we learned that this AR chunk often shows up at the end of a, an, ad, um, an adjective, right? So if something's familiar, it means you've seen it before. Right? When you walk through the mall, you might not see any familiar faces. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, I know that person. She looks familiar. Um, right here, peculiar. Here's another adjective. If something's peculiar, it's strange, right? It makes you look twice. So let's add that over here. Um, we talked about this back in week 12 uh, with words like regular and similar. We learned that AR is usually an adjective suffix. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's continue. A genius. That's a noun. It's a very smart person. A very smart person is a genius. A medallion would be like a, a medal or a coin. Okay, made out of metal, a little round thing. A uh, million, just like billion, can be used as a noun or an adjective. We write it like that. There's one million, one billion would be written like that. A pavilion, that's a noun. A pavilion is a covered area. Sometimes you see them in parks. They have like a, a picnic area that's under a pavilion, right? So you can sit there when it's raining. Um, a rebellion, that goes with rebellious, right? So it's a, a rebellion is when a group of people fight against the government or they fight against the leaders. So I'm just going to write a rebellion is a fight. A stallion is a wild horse. It's got lots of energy. It might be hard to tame. And we talked about valiant. Okay, so lots of great words this week. Um, the last thing I want to talk about with you is we do have a new root. Um, that's on page 194. It's a Latin root, ven, V-E-N. And it means come. Okay, so for example, um, if you want to stop something from happening before it comes, you prevent it. If you want to come between two people to help them solve a problem, you intervene. Um, if you come together for a meeting, you convene. So notice here we have a bunch of words. Many of them are going to use this chunk, and then some of them will put an E on the end to make a verb like intervene or convene. Um, right here, if you look at convenient, there's our chunk right there. So if something's convenient, it's easy to get to it. We can come to it, right, pretty quickly. Um, so on this page, you're just going to read the words and then match them with their definitions. Use what you know about prefixes, suffixes, parts of speech, and all of that. Good luck, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.